Um, today we're going to take a look at Aster Express and take a tour of the VMs and all the tools and documentation that come with it. Um, this is the video three of the series and today we're going to cover the VMs and documentation, the Aster Management Console or AMC, and the ACT or Aster Command Tool, and of course we're going to finish up with Ter Teradata Studio, which is a query, uh, a thick client for query management and things like that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So what I did was, is to make it easy on myself, I created a folder on top of my desktop called AE, which stands for Aster Express. Let's open that up and take a look. And as you can see, I've already downloaded the, um, the Aster Express uh, virtual images, which come in a zip file, a seven zip file. And also I've downloaded the PDF document, um, the getting started guide. And this guide is really great. So I recommend reading this ahead of time before you uh, take off and start doing this on your own. Um, it just is a great document for getting started and setting up the environment and you know just really getting to know what you have to do to get this going. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. And this is the 7-zip file, the Asterix Source VM images. Let's uh, take a right mouse click on that and look at the properties. This is important because if your environment isn't sized at 4.65 gigabytes, um, it means, and it's probably smaller, it means it's probably something went wrong during your download. So, um, you know, I, I would recommend you take a look at that first. And then to unzip it, after you've installed 7-zip, you should see this, so I right mouse click on the Astro Express 7-zip file, and I can just go ahead and extract here. Um, and that will automatically create this folder structure right here. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's go through that, and you'll see a set of virtual images down below. We'll go into that one, we'll go and this this will open up into Aster, and this will go into that. And you'll see three folders. Aster Queen, which is where the Aster uh, Queen image lives. Aster Worker, which is where the worker image lives. And then is this folder in the middle. It's important because this is where all the documentation exists for the Aster Express environment. Um, this, this document right here is really important. It's the Analytics Foundation Guide, and in there is all the syntax for all the SQL MapReduce and SQL Graph analytical functions, which really differentiate Aster in this uh, arena of, of a next generation analytics. Okay, so in, in here also is the Aster Express User Guide, which is uh, valuable as well. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the virtual images and what they look like. Uh, or, yeah. And then, so here is the queen and let me bring the worker over and there's the worker so in the previous video we learned how the various uh, components and servers of the Aster environment work and this is the worker which is its own image and this is where the data lives so when you create a database you create table objects you load data into that into those tables the the actual data resides on the workers now this image the Aster Express image only comes with one worker but in reality, in a, in a real Aster environment, this, there would be many workers contained there. So you'd spread that data across many of those workers. And over here is the queen. The queen is where you actually log into. And you don't have to log directly into the queen like I'm about to do into the Linux environment. You can use clients. I'm going to show you that here as we go forward. But right here, you can see I've, I'm presented with the Aster login. And so to log into this environment, it would be A-S-T-E-R, Aster. I hit Enter. And then the password again would be Aster, it's T T E R, and here comes the Linux prop. So from here, I can log into um, ACT or Aster Command Tool, or I could log in and use N Cluster Loader. And this is where I would the N Cluster Loader command is where I actually use um, to load data into my system. So if I wanted to get help with Aster Command Tool, I would type in ACT dash dash help. And I hit enter and I would get a verbose listing of all the commands and objects that I would use to log in. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to bounce out of this because the next thing I want to show you is the Aster command tool, the, or excuse me, the Aster management tool. So the Aster management tool is a web-based utility for looking at what's going on inside of the Aster environment. You can use uh, Aster, you can use uh, Google Chrome, you can use Internet Explorer, you can use Firefox to be able to go in. And as you can see here, I'm presented with this uh, error screen because there's no certificate authority. So that's not a big deal. So let's go ahead and we'll hit advanced and we'll go ahead and we'll proceed into that infrastructure. Now your environment may take a little bit longer or, you know, than mine or mine may take longer than yours depending on machine strength and things like that. This is the first time I've logged into it. So it may take a while. So here I am, I'm presented with 
a user ID and I'm going to use DB super user to log into the database and I'm going to use DB super user let me do this I want to get it right the first time and we'll log in and so it's DB super user and password DB super user of course these IDs can be changed to secure and harden the environment so we'll go ahead and we'll log in and we're presented with a dashboard of the Aster Management Console. And this really tells me the health and overall well-being of my Aster environment. It has four tabs across the top here, the, the dashboard, which really shows me all pending uh, activities and queries and things that are going on, how many logins are on the system, the last queries that were executed, the five, and the longest running queries on the system were right here, as well as my disk capacities and what I have available as far as storage. Um, now, as you can see up here, I've got a red ball here, that red circle denotes that my, uh, my environment is, is not running, and that's fine. Um, VMs, you know, depending on how they're shut down, may be that way, or this could be the first time you're going through it, and so that's fine. So let's go ahead and show you how all that works. So you can see here, I've got the worker and the queen, and this is the IP address of my queen. You can see I have a prepared state on my worker. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to at, click this activate button right here to get that running. So this could take a little bit uh, of time, so we'll hit OK on that. This could take a little while to get running, but you'll, what you'll see is, is that right up here the cluster activation is, a, is being initiated right here. And you'll see that cycle through, and now you can see that we've changed this to yellow. And it's starting to prepare that environment so that I can get it up and running. So once this is done, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll uh, show you the, how to log into ACT and, and get in there. But right here you have processes, and these are queries that are actually running on the system. And I can take a look at that, and I can see who's doing what, what the queries are, and it gives me actually a very um, you know, brief and detailed uh, uh, explanation of the query and its planning and things like that. The nodes do exactly what you think. Is those are the nodes of the workers, and it gives me the hardware stats, and I can go in and take a look at I/O and things like that, as well as the partition map, which is how is the data laid out across the workers and the V workers contained within them. Now you can see that I've come back up, and my environment is online, and you can see my uh, worker status is switched to active. So we're running and we're ready to go now. So I'm going to minimize this, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to get a. Um, a putty session going to to log into my queen. Now you can see here I've got quite a few um, via, or connections here. So I've already created one called Azure Express, and you can do this too. So hey, hit load. So basically, to get to a putty session, I would um, start a command. I put in an IP address of the queen 192.168.100.100 port 22, and I I would I could then give that a name and then save it, and then I can just open that up. And voila, I'm going to be presented with my um, login screen. So the login for the Linux environment is Aster. And my password is also Aster. And as you can see, here I'm logged in. So I want to log into ACT, Aster command tool, for the first time. I'm going to use an actual um, predicate here, dash u. And I'm going to call it db super user and dash underscore w. So you notice there's an uppercase u and lowercase w for password, db super user. I'm going to hit enter. And I'm now inside of the Aster command tool. And what the Aster command tool is, is a command-based infrastructure that allows you to interrogate the metadata, to be able to log into the databases, to be able to see what tables are there, and then you can actually run real ANSI SQL queries as well as SQL MR, SQL MapReduce queries, and SQL GR queries from within this facility. So let's go ahead and take a look, and inside here are these shortcut commands that I love. You hit dash H, I'm looking at all the simple commands that come with it, and if you're familiar with ANSI SQL, you're going to be familiar with how this all works. So let's take a look at slash Question mark, and this is going to be a more verbose um, explanation of some of the commands that come with the shortcut commands that come with my uh, Aster command tool. And these things are things like connecting to different databases. So I can be in Beehive if I've created another database. I can switch over using the dash slash c. Um, I can install my analytic functions from here. I can rev review um, what is already installed as a slash de and slash df 
commands here to see what files are the which analytical functions and files are already in on my server. So I'm going down here and I've got my informational side. And this can look at my metadata, what tables exist, what views exist, my indices, schemas, groups, users, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit Q and it's going to take me back here. And so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to issue one of those simple commands. So I'm going to take a look at what tables exist on my Aster environment. So let's let that go. And we'll see that. Excellent. So now you can see a list of the tables that are in the Beehive database. Now to run, I've got this bank web clicks. And I'm going to go through how to build out that table and how to load data into it later. But um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually going to run this command, select star from bank web clicks, and we're going to limit to 100 records so we don't uh, show that uh, going on forever. So there you go. I have a customer ID, a session ID, a page name, and a date timestamp. So you can already see how easy that is to run an ANSI SQL query. So let's jump out of that and let's go into Teradata Studio. So Teradata Studio is an application that's web or excuse me thick client based so it runs on windows that allows me to connect to and query an, an aster database an aster cluster so you can see here i'm just going to go ahead and pop that open and i'm going to take a look at the metadata that describes how that connection is made and you can do the same thing and this is available on teradata and developers express um, so you can look here it's 192.168.100.100 and my username is DB Superuser. My password again is DB Superuser. The port number is 2406, and my database is Beehive. And of course, I'm connecting into an Aster database. So let's go ahead. Let's make sure I'm connected. And it looks like I am. And then so I can look here. Here's the Beehive database. I'm in the public schema, and I've got a list of tables. And there it is again. My bank web clicks. So I can click here like so, and I can take a look at the metadata that describes my system. Oops. Re-establishing, re no big deal. Let's go ahead and reconnect here. All right, excellent. Um, nothing ever goes to plan, but let's just keep going here. All right, so public and tables. Okay, and there it is. My bank web clicks. Let's go ahead and take a look at the columns contained within them. And there you go. So there are the columns and their data types and all the metadata that goes along with it. So just like we ordered, issued the same command inside of uh, Aster Command Terminal, we're going to be able to do the same thing inside of uh, St Teradata Studio. So go ahead and run that query. Now, the neat thing about this, ah, data already came back. Great. So the neat thing about this is that I'm going to be able to um, run SQL MapReduce queries or SQL Graph queries and do all the fun things that come along with Aster. Um, so I think that's about it for this video. Um, um, the next video will